Number 44. Calculate the mass of the sun based on data for Earth's orbit and compare the value obtained with the sun's actual mass. All right. All right, so I got a little system here, right? Here's the sun, here's the Earth. All right, we do know, and we're going to need to know the radius between the two objects, all right, as the Earth orbits the sun. And it does orbit uh, with some, you know, angular uh, velocity, okay? Now, first question is, do you know the angular velocity of the Earth around the sun? And I'm going to bet that you actually do. You might just not realize it in that form, but re realize that the Earth take, makes one full one full revolution every year, right? Every year. It makes one full revolution every year. Uh, angular velocity is simply a, a revolution or a degree change per year. Or per, no, I shouldn't say per year, but per time. Okay, so generally it's a degree or angle change per unit time. So you, you do know the angular velocity, actually. All right, but now um, you know that we don't like these particular units. So why don't we turn them into radians per second? All right, so we, we'll do uh, revolutions, revolutions on the bottom, radians on the top. We know that there are two pi radians for every one revolution, so that cancels that. And now we got to bring years all the way down to seconds, right? So I can first go to days if there are 365 days in a year. So that goes bye-bye. And then we can go to uh, days to hours, right? There's 24 hours in a day, so that goes bye-bye. And then we can finally make the leap from hour to second. Know that there are uh, 3,600 seconds in an hour, so that goes bye-bye. And finally, we're left with radians per second. So just simply do the math. So it's uh, 2, whoops, 2 pi divided by uh, 365 times 24 times 3,600. And it comes out to 1.99, right? 1.99 times 10 to the minus, minus 7. So 1.99, 1.99 times, oops, times 10 to the minus 7. And that now is in radians per second, okay? I mean, this is basically 2, right? 2 radians, uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 7 radians per second. Okay, so now how, okay, so we got that. That was another piece of information. And uh, so now we basically write this, all the information we got, and so we're probably going to have to do a lot of substitutions here in terms of formulas, you know. So why don't we start with, um, well, realize we have two, two objects here, right, and they're each exerting a force on one another. Uh, so why don't we choose this particular formula over here to start, okay? Uh, force due to gravity, right? So the force of gravity between two objects is equal to the gravitational force multiplied by the mass of one of them, we'll call it the Earth, uh, times the mass of the other, in this case it's the Sun, all divided by the uh, radius or the distance between them squared. Okay, so now um, we're basically looking for the mass of the Sun, right? Okay, just keep that in mind. And somehow um, we're probably going to want some of this stuff to cancel, maybe the mass of the Earth to cancel. All right. So what I need to start doing now is I need to start thinking, are there any other formulas that I can start bringing into this at all? And realize, right, that the uh, centripetal force is basically the same thing as the force due to gravity. All right. So if, if we're looking at this from the um, perspective of Earth, okay, if we're looking at it from the perspective of Earth, the centripetal force that's necessary to keep Earth on its orbit here Right, points to the center of the uh, to the center of its orbit, meaning it points to the sun. And therefore, if this centripetal force is present, I mean it has to be present in order for Earth to be on a circular path. Then there is also a centripetal acceleration that's also present. And right, the only other piece here would be the mass. If I were thinking about this formula, so the centripetal acceleration that the Earth experiences will be equal to the mass of the Earth multiplied by the centripetal acceleration that the Earth experiences, okay? So that's how I think through the variables in this formula. Again, it's all about consistency. The centripetal force that the Earth experiences is equal to the mass of the Earth multiplied by the centripetal acceleration of the Earth, okay? So now realize that I'm going to take this and plug it on in for the force here, 
That's going to come out weird, I realized. I'll plug it into the force here, okay? And remember that the mass now, right, is the mass of the Earth because I'm, pl I'm plugging in this formula, this uh, centripetal acceleration of the Earth. That's basically the same thing. The force due to gravity that's caused by the sun on the Earth is the same thing as the centripetal force that's applied to the Earth by the sun to keep it in its circular orbit. So here we have then the MAC, right, of the Earth, we could say, whatever. I'm just going to leave that part out for now. Equals then uh, G, mass of the Earth, mass of the sun, all over R squared. So look what cancels, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye. Goodbye, Earth. Bye-bye. So now we have centripetal acceleration is equal to the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the sun all over R squared. Okay, so what do we know? Well, do we know the radius between? Yeah, we do. We have the value over here. This is a constant. Do we know the centripetal acceleration? No, we don't. But here's the key. How can I connect this idea of angular velocity to centripetal acceleration? Well, it looks like, it looks like I'm going to have to go through the linear velocity, right? So I got to do a two more substitutions here. Okay. So what I want to do now is look at this particular formula. And I'm going to substitute in this for centripetal acceleration. I'm going to have arrows going all over the place in this problem. So here now I'm going to write the result over here. So we're going to have now v squared over r is equal to g mass of the sun all over r squared. Okay. So now I don't know the linear velocity, but I do know the angular velocity. So that's where now the next equation is going to come in handy. This one, this relates the linear velocity to the radius and the angular velocity. So now I can take this result and plug it on in here. And now I get something that looks like this, right? Radius times um, uh, angular velocity divided by uh, squared, excuse me, divided by r is equal to now g times the mass of the sun all over r squared. And now realize there's only really two, this is a constant, and there's only two variables now, the radius and the angular velocity, both of which we know. So let's just do some simplifications here. All right, so this, um, so basically I'm going to distribute the square here to both terms. Okay, so this would become r squared, this would become omega squared, but then I'm dividing it by r, so one of the, so this denominator cancels with one of the uh, radii up there. All right, so it'd be radius times omega squared, is equal to then g ms over r squared. And now I want to move these two variables on out, right? I want ms by itself. Come on, there we go. I want ms by itself. So the numerator here goes down to the denominator on the other side. The denominator down here goes up to the numerator on the opposite side. And that would solve now for mass of the sun. So I'm going to write it now. I know I'm all over the place. I'm going to write it over here on the left-hand side. So we're going to have r squared times... Right, I'm going to bring up the r squared times r times omega squared all over g is equal to the mass of the sun. There it is. Now look, I'm just going to combine this to make it nice, okay? So we're going to do r cubed, all right? So this just becomes r cubed. All right, and now we just got to plug in the values, right? Let's just plug in some of the values. All right, so I'm going to write it over here on the upper uh, left-hand side. All right, so here we go. 1.496 times 10 to the eighth. Okay, now realize, though, this is in kilometers. So this eight really has to go. We got to multiply this value by 1,000. Or simply just add three to this exponent. Okay, so that's going to become 11. So that's in meters now. Remember, you got to have it in meters. Now that will then be cubed times... Omega, which we have 1.99 times 10 to the minus 7. That whole thing is squared. And then divide that out by the gravitational constant, which is 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11. And that will equal, that looks like a 4 there, 10 to the minus 11. Um, and that will equal the mass of the sun. So let's see, ready? 1.496 times 10 to the 11th cubed times 1.99 times 10 to the minus 7 squared. Divide that by 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11. 
And what do we get? Look at that. This works out to be 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Okay. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Look the mass of the sun up on one of your tables. It's basically exactly it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really do appreciate it very much. I hope I'm able to help. And uh, if I am, please hit that subscribe button. That would be awesome. I would appreciate it so very much. It's also very cool and very motivating. Right, I got a lot more questions to go. So uh, definitely, definitely helps me get through a lot of these questions. So much appreciate your viewership. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.